Okie dokie, this is Chris Park from Arkin Games here. Um, well, there have been some surprising developments. Uh, good, nothing to do with me, actually. Um, or directly, Arkin, even. Um, so, the uh, in a recent video I was showing how things didn't quite translate over from um, uh, Substance Painter to um, the Unity shaders, the Unity standard shader, you know, super perfectly. And um, part of that is, I mean, there's a lot of different pieces to that as to why exactly that is the case. Um, but one of the big things has to do with shaders and how those are used. And um, the shaders that I've been using in other projects, not AI War, uh, are this awesome framework called the Alloy Physical uh, Freighter, blah, blah, blah. Alloy Physical Shader Framework by Rust Ltd. Um, and this thing is fantastic. Um, it gives really good. Uh, results um it's got a bunch of stuff with area lights which is not something that unity supports except in baked lighting um area lights being those that uh shine a light um that isn't coming from a point or a spot uh basically um and um a lot of times those have different specular you know highlighting elements to them for instance uh so they don't have you know, such a glow to them. Um, so, for instance, um, with the uh, title screen ship, this is what I created in Substance Painter. And so, looking at it, this is what I expected to have come over into Unity, more or less. Um, granted, the things that are set to glow here were not yet set to glow in Unity. But you know, I was I was happy with how this looks. Get over in Unity, and this is after a lot of work to make it actually look this good. Um, you know, and I've got um, some fancy post processing going on on this scene only, with a bunch of chromatic aberration going on here, and then with the particles that are going by, it makes it look like it's got this kind of heat haze shimmer, which is pretty cool. And I've actually got a variety of point lights that are zipping past and then resetting. It's actually kind of a neat thing to uh, um, see if you want. Um, but uh, at any rate, um, you can see what these these are doing. Then they wait an indeterminate random amount of time there and then go back and the whole things are bobbing along. And it gives this illusion of movement. Um, when, you know, really, there's nothing of the sort. Um, and I'll pr probably make this scene more complicated as uh, we get closer to release. Um, you know, it's the first impression, and it's cool. Um, it's not what we saw here. I had to, I had to change the logo stuff because it just was not visible enough at all. I was going to do some stuff with lighting on it. It just was not, not coming out the way I wanted um at any rate that brings me back to alloy um those guys have made it free and open source which was a big what to me because um this is one of the bigger frameworks that a lot of people use uh, especially for deferred type stuff um deferred versus forward we're using forward and um uh, AI war, uh, but deferred certainly is useful in other contexts. Um, the uh, so they on their forum thread, which you can get to off their thing there, they've linked both to their GitHub with the latest stuff, as well as to saying, you know, hey, um, this thing is free now, and um, you know, you guys feel free to update it. We're going to do it a little bit, but Basically, for the most part, we can't. Well, that changes things. Um, when it comes to the way that we were exporting stuff, 
from Unity, um, or from Substance Painter to Unity, um, one of the nice things about uh, Alloy is that it is um, using multiple channels uh, put together. So basically, there's a bunch of kind of grayscale data that can be used for a variety of purposes. And um, uh, typical PBR shaders, uh, things like specularity maps and um, uh, metalness maps, those are already some or, uh, smoothness maps, that sort of thing. Those are already um, um, this is the HDR camera, if you're curious. Um, with the HDR, uh, HDR lighting, by the way. Um, these things, you've got a metallic and smoothness map that's here, um, and that's combined. But it's actually possible to combine in an occlusion map as well. There's RGBA that's available in these things, and the A is actually a higher um, uh, higher precision uh, set of data in the default compression than um, the RGB is. And so uh, the metallic smoothness that the Unity standard shader uses is actually slightly wasteful, not super wasteful. I mean, it's nice that it doesn't require baking, and it's more efficient than um, what you use in uh, the Stingray system in uh, 3ds Max or Maya, where everything is its own separate texture, which they do for flexibility. But um, when you start running that into um, in Unity 27.2 or 0.3, I don't remember which, they started making it so you could import Stingray shaders directly, but it's less efficient because all your textures are separate. Um, and so uh, Alloy lets us condense some of this stuff in. What that means is um, we need to have a different export process. I was previously exporting the diffuse the metallic smoothness, the normal map, and if there is one, the emission. That's no good when it comes to us switching over to alloy because we're also going to want um, at least occlusion. And believe it or not, actually this kind of weird version of specularity. Um, and so with that in mind, I'm going to use this example ship uh, since it should be hopefully a dramatic difference. Um, and we're going to do export textures. Now, this part here is a tutorial for blue. So, eight minutes in. All right. Um, right now, the config is set to Unity 5 standard metallic. What we're actually going to want is um, alloy as a new preset. So if you go from export over to configuration, there's different things that you can set up. Now, um, I am going to make another one uh, because the alloy separated that uh, that I've got going on there is not what I want. So we're going to call, so this is how you will do this too, Blue. You hit uh, the plus sign there. Um, and um, then we'll just call it, double click it, alloy um, emissive, we'll call it. Um, we go in and out, it should, well, it will eventually move itself back up there. So um, as a reminder to myself here, right. Um, so what we need is, it's been a while since I did this, so. Um, Let's try and pre-combine this ourselves um, because um, otherwise we have to go through the batch processor on the Unity, uh, the alloy thing here, and that was something that was a real pain. So let's give it a shot. Um, uh, come on now. There's a material map channel packer here which normally you have to drag each texture in and combine them. That's something that Synth would have to be doing, which is a 
pain in the rear. Um, although, actually, the normal map being in here and that packing the specularity a certain way is handy. So, actually, that's why. Sorry. Sorry, Synth. You're going to have to do it anyway. All right. So, what we need is um, we're going to say we want the diffuse coming out. I think that's how we do this. Okay. Converted maps, diffuse. Come on now. How do I do this? Output map. Right. Convert output map. Output map RGBA. Right. So click that. You get one. And then um, so the RGB, we're going to take the output map of base color, I want to say. Yep, base color. And we drag that onto here, and we say the RGB channels. And um, the opacity, drag onto here. And you say the A channel, I think, is what you're going to do. Um, we're not really using any sort of alpha on this anyway. So um, can't think of any cases where we're using alpha. Well, there, there might be. You never know. So we may as well put it in there. Um, OK, so then we're going to need. So this one here, RGB alpha, um, this determines the name of it. And so you say, like, um, texture set would be like AI War 2 logo, et cetera. So dollar sign texture set, and then you've got base color. Um, in this particular case, um, since this is a um, ordered thing that we have to do here, uh, I'd actually like to put in numbers. That would be kind of handy. So let's do texture set. Um, we'll just call this diffuse right now. Um, and then we want right everything else is just gonna be rgb or whatever so we get rgb here and then we're going to drag the ooh i drug the input maps into that that doesn't seem right uh okay we're going to take the normal opengl format drag that in here and it's going to be the rgb channels this should be happy um Normal and um, yeah, it's kind of like normal GL there, it doesn't really matter. We're not going to mess with the height map. Um, we certainly could, Alloy generates height maps, um, but in my experience, overall, using there's two uh, real time height, height map uh, techniques one is POM, one is parallax. Palm, you wind up with all sorts of uh, edge distortion issues, and the parallax is good, but under the tessellation support of OpenGL Core, it is not something that really knocks my socks off. So um, that, uh, either way, that being said, it's not worth it um, here in. Um, AI War 2, where a lot of the stuff we're seeing is distant. So, all right. So, we've got our texture set AO for ambient occlusion. So, um, now, now, how do we do this? I guess it's okay. Yeah. So, now we just hit gray for we're creating one thing that's coming out. And so now we're taking out our um, like I said, it's been a while since I did this. Um, right, okay, so we're gonna pull the ambient occlusion from the input channel there. We're gonna pull that as a gray channel. That should be correct. And um, we'll call that um, Occlusion, just to make this as straightforward as possible for synth, we'll call this occlusion. That way, all the things match. I'm going to create another gray one. Uh, let's see what else we need. We need the metallic, we need the roughness specular, yeah. 
specular is apparently being done as an RGB, which is interesting. Um, so now we have metallic, because we are using the metallic workflow overall. Um, and so we've got metallic here um, from metallic. Interesting. Gray channel. There we go. Okay. We got another gray one. Um, this should be smoothness or is it roughness? Roughness. Roughness. Roughness and smoothness are the same thing. They're just opposites. So black and white, they're, you just invert it to get one versus the other. So now we've got that. And now I think this should be, the specular should be a, uh, Why on earth would that be RGBA? I'm going to say this is a gray channel. Um, because I know that this is exporting just grays either way. So, <clears throat> um, specular. Now, this specular, we're not pulling it from here. We're pulling it from here. That's converted map that is... Um, probably the right thing to talk, uh, pull from. I talked to the, I think it was the Substance guys I talked to about it. Um, the, um, either the Allo guys, guys, I can't remember who I was talking to. It was just a few months ago. But the, um, the Allo guys are using a metallic workflow, which normally doesn't include any sort of specular definition whatsoever. But they're using specularity um, maps for some extra funkiness that is based off some white paper that Disney wrote. And so, fine, I'm not going to argue with that. Um, so anyway, it's, uh, it is what it is there. That's a, that's a neat thing that they've got. Um, and so <clears throat> using their material map packer, um, we bring in this, the specularity. Normally, they just have it default to gray, but instead pull it down to being a texture. Um, so now, unlike this alloy separated one, um, I'm going to also need the emissive map. And so this is going to be texture set. Emissive. And uh, we're going to pull from this the RGB channels. We don't need an alpha on that. We arguably don't need it there, but we're going to leave it alone. Um, OK, so now I want to have this in the right order So uh, for, for synth purposes. So um, I'm going to say one metallic. Uh, Two occlusion, three specular, four roughness, um, yeah, five normal. Six diffuse, it's always in the same order at least, and seven emissive. This is uh, actually, I'm going to say zero diffuse to put that right at the front because this is usually the order in which we're going to be messing with things. So uh, I can reorder this here, not that it's going to matter for any sort of other long term purposes. Um, I guess that's six emissive. So um okay blue this right here um should be what your alloy emissive looks like now when you come back over here config now you have to scroll up or down temporarily once you restart um substance painter it'll start putting it alphabetically now you've got alloy emissive when you export it now it's going to put out these texture sets um we're going to put them out as pngs and Life will be happy. Um, so, 
Um, in my particular case right now, um, I've been putting these in here. So I'm going to create a new folder called Alloy. Now, most of these textures are things that Synth is going to get rid of. He's going to combine them. So, blue, you hit export. And a bunch of magic happens. Um, this particular one is giant and has a ton of uh, um, individual things to bake. So that uh, is very unusually slow. Usually it's just snap and it's done. Um, but I also haven't opened these other things. Normally, having five or was it six, um, five giant texture sets um, is pretty unusual. Usually, you have like one, maybe two. Um, this is actually by far the slowest export I've ever had. So, uh, export finished with some warnings. I don't need to open the folder. But look in the logs. This is complaining about the opacity map not being there for some of these and the emissive uh, channel not being there for some others. Um, now that's fine. Those are just warnings. Those aren't actually issues. Um, now um, what I'm happy to see is that um, I am missing a, an emissive map uh, texture being exported for the AI War 2 logo file. Let me go ahead and get these importing. It's going to take it a minute on the Unity side to get all that junk in there. Um, at this point, Blue, this is what you would hand off to Synth. And so um, now we enter the part of the tutorial that is for Synth. So time mark, uh, 22 and a half minutes. We're done with Blue. Time for Synth. Um, as an aside, since I'm just kind of watching this for the minute, for the moment while this thing imports, um, the normal process of exporting this is going to be vastly faster um, in the future. Uh, yes, I will save this because it's the settings of how it's going out. Um, it's part of what it's remembering, um, and so in the future, it's just boom, boom, boom select the um, alloy emissive and out it goes. Um, okay, so now all this stuff has happened. I can come in here to my I think model, no, materials, alloy. And we have all these things here. Um, so synth, I guess 23 and a half minutes is the real starting point for you. You can um, potentially shrink this down a little bit so you can see this um, better, but um, it's kind of up to you how exactly you want to handle this. Can I shrink this? Oh, I can. Nice. Um, okay. So what I'm going to go ahead and do um, is I'm going to just go ahead and delete all of this other stuff that we had before. Goodbye, cruel world. Oh, come on now. Wow, that's laggy for some reason. Um, excuse me. Um, delete these guys. Oh, the agony of selecting these things. All right, delete those guys. Now we have these uh, textures, the uh, materials in there. Um, 
Now I'm just going to drag this in here and get rid of the alloy. Ah! And then get rid of the alloy subfolder. Okay, so these things are set to have emissive maps, which is why they're going nuts like this. Um, so we can see what we're doing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select these five materials here and uncheck emission. So at this point, now it's just all reflections of stuff. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is instead of having the standard shader, which I just said the other day, but now they've made this thing free. So, okay, yeah, we're going to go to alloy and then core. Um, that's going to take a second. Um, already, you can see there's a few differences that happen, and things look a little better, even with nothing else going on. Hmm. Um, I'm actually kind of excited because I may be able to uh, change the ambient light behaviors without doing any sort of real-time baking which if so would let me swap in and out HDRI maps as the game switches planets, which would give vastly different looks, which would be pretty darn cool. And one of the problems with this scene here is that it's got a bad HDRI map for the purposes of uh, the um, lighting this particular ship. It's very different lighting from what was in Alloy. So it's kind of part of why I was bummed. All right. At any rate, at this point now, it's time to start assigning stuff. So the alloy um, texture stuff looks pretty different. First step is always going to be logo zero, or you know whatever it is, zero diffuse. Just drag that into that slot there. Um, starting with the logo, that thing is hard to see to begin with. Oh well, then you. Drag the normal in here because then it will go, hey, this is not a normal map right now. You want to fix it? You say yes. Um, at that point, then you can start dragging these in in order um, and go ahead and set this one to texture on specularity. So drag in metallic, occlusion, specular, roughness, and finally the normal map. Now get a coffee. The next thing is, Importantly, click the material because now it will say whatever the location is, name of the material underscore alloy pm dot png. Otherwise, you'll get something a little bit weird. You can check this if you want, but really, there's not much point. We're going to hit generate, and this is where you get your coffee. Yeah, um, This doesn't seem to be any faster with uh, PNGs versus uh, TIFF or Targa files. Um, Targa files are something that some artists really prefer the TGA files because they're um, they have full floating point precision. It's like eight bits, I think, per RGB and A. And they're not compressed whatsoever, so it's like a super bitmap if you want to think of it that way. Um, but they have a linear and very expensive file size, like 64 megs for a 2048 by 2048 uh, texture. So PNGs being compressed is great, but they require you to actually uh, use the um, compression which takes time so now we've got this thing here which is going to look weird it's going to have some strange colors usually mine tend to come out pretty yellow sometimes they're kind of green it doesn't matter um what that the reason why that looks weird is because this has been converting all right so the metallic took the grayscale. that's what that means and it put it into the r channel of the resulting P, uh, PNG. It took the uh, G, the, again, grayscale, put it into the G, so green in this case, channel uh, for the occlusion. Specularity went grayscale to B for blue. Um, and then roughness, I asked them about this. I actually talked to the alloy guys, that's what it was. Um, I asked them, you know, can we put the roughness 
not in the um, uh, A channel because PNG's A channel is problematic when you're exporting from um, Substance Painter. And they were like, well, um, in your typical format here, there's a greater precision on the A channel. And we need that. It's like five um, bits per R, G, and B, and then eight bits for A. And they needed that extra um, precision to, for roughness to really look nice. And it's not needed on these others. So that's why it had to go in the A. And that's that plus the combination of the normal map getting into the calculation of the specularity map is why um, we're having to go through this material map packing process here versus just uh, combining that in Substance Painter to begin with. So at this point, at any rate, the next step is we drag that in here and boom, suddenly this starts looking a lot more um, like what it's supposed to look like. Um, if this has something that's emissive, which it doesn't, then um, we could uh, do something with it. Um, you can set whether it's allowed to have um, reflections and specular highlights or not. You can also set the strengths of the metallic and various things like that. And the strength of the normal maps are also uh, in here. Um, we don't need GI turned on. Don't, well, let's turn on real-time GI. I don't know. I don't think that's going to make any difference, but we'll turn it on. Um, all right. So now we go back in, and everything that is number one through number four, we delete. We're not going to need them again. Um, the only purpose of those was to make this material map. Um, so now it's the Arkin logo. Hurrah. Um, I set the tint on that to be um, something else that shouldn't have been. I, you know, I set it to be red there before, but that wasn't matching, of course, what was in um, the other side. So let's see what we got here <clears throat> when we uh, do it the way I had originally. Um, envisioned it so to speak so drag so now now i left the material map window open because that's convenient um always be sure to drag the normal map in the new normal map in um if you're not sure if you've got the new normal map or not and you click it then it will highlight it oh boy uh don't double click it but if you click it it will highlight hopefully the correct one over there. Since we deleted uh, numbers one through four, those are all gone. And we can easily say, you know, yeah, we got the, you know, we're putting in the correct things there. So one, two, three, four. Um, click away from and click to the material. Got the right name, generate. Get a coffee. <laughs> it takes it a while to decompress the various PNGs, pack them, do whatever calculations it's doing with the normal map, the specularity, and then shove that stuff into uh, a PNG, uh, compress that, put that on disk, and then Unity goes, oh, a new file. I better read that, and then pulls it back out. Um, you may notice that it also creates this other uh, dot asset file here. It's a little scriptable object that they create that has the metadata about it. So it's easier to regenerate this thing. <clears throat> Material map packer is, again, as a reminder, under alloy um, material map channel packer is there. I moved stuff around in the menus there so um by the way you're gonna want to check enable instancing on most things it's nothing to instance here because we only ever show one of these so with this one i don't care but uh normally we would care all right so we've got 
this thing, the alloy PM stands for packed map. And then now this should be behaving. All this looks good, yeah. Oh, this does have an emissive bit, though. So now you'll notice there's not an emissive section. So we hit uh, add tab, emission. It's nice because we can do rim emission and stuff if we wanted to, which is pretty cool. And then we've got this right here uh, for the mask. We're not going to do anything for the effect. The tint, normally you're just going to stick that all the way up. Um, I can do various things with this. Um, so apparently what happened is I actually made an emissive channel for this, but I didn't make an emissive map. So this thing is literally just black. Um, and so occasionally you're going to run into that, uh, synth where blue did the same thing. And you're like, there is nothing glowing on this. This is a black, just pure black texture. So we're wasting GPU here. So we're going to, uh, minus that out. We're going to delete the emissive texture and voila, we don't actually have emission after all. All right. Let's get into something more interesting. So we got the beam cannon here is the next dealie. Um, normal strength, set that to one. Glossy reflection, set that to on. Um, that's the beam cannon part up there, as you might have noticed with it suddenly being a little different looking. Diffuse, drag that in. Ooh, hoo, hoo, looking better. Um, now we need our normal map. Fix now. Oopsies. I did not go in and delete these guys. We don't want to commit those because it's going to be a waste of SVN space, which we do pay for. I click this and I can see Arc and Logo. It's the wrong thing. So Beam Cannon, bring that over here. Um, Beam Cannon, click here. And I can see again what's going on. Look at the nice ridges there. Yeah, that's just. I don't know what it is. Uh, what's wrong with Unity's standard shader compared to this? Um, oops. All right, all right, metallic, occlusion, specular, roughness. Click here. Looks good. Alloy PM, generate. Okay. Um, I don't know what it is that's kind of wrong with Unity's standard shader versus uh, what we see with Alloy. I mean, uh, Unity's made some amazing strides with their PBR pipeline, and you're able to make stuff that looks really good in Unity. Um, but the fact that there are these packages out there like Alloy, and there's another uh, shader. A uh, group called Uber, um, which I don't like as well. Um, I don't feel like it gives as good of results. Uh, I don't think it performs quite as well personally. Um, I just, I just haven't been as happy with it. Um, but a lot of people love it, so it's just, I guess, ultimately personal preference thing. Um, at any rate, um, the fact that there exists these the secondary ecosystem of things really shows. Bam, look at that. That is different from what we had before. Um, all right, one through four, metallic roughness, goodbye. Hooray. Um, all right, now we're to the missile. That's these guys. This is a boring one, sorry. Um, did I set the... Everything is good on this. Okay, missiles, interestingly. There are more than one of these, so I enabled the instancing. Um, oh, and I did want to beam cannon should have an emissive texture. It does. Anyway, so real time GI, if it has emission, definitely turn that on. Um, all right. So now, of course, this is flipping out because of the uh, the way that there's not a mask. 
So now we we'll take this emissive mask, put it there. Now, one of the things that happened is I previously had set the tint to be something else. I upped the brightness and set the tint to be something else in the HDR range. Um, that's not something since that you need to normally do, but you kind of can to give it a little bit of an extra oomph. Uh, blue or I can also come back in and do that later. Doesn't really matter. Um, but at any rate, it should be in most of the ones you're replacing something on, it's already going to be uh, um, colored in some way. And uh, you can always, you can click here on the brightness and drag it up and down a little bit. Um, we're going to want something, it'll turn to HDR whenever the brightness is above one. And um, that's where we start getting into having some bloom. Um, we're going to want to have some bloom, even though the bloom is excessive right now. All right, so back to the, miss uh, the missiles. Um, these actually do have instancing uh, because there's more than one even here. So, heck, why not? Let's instance them. There's no reason to be wasteful. Um, so we put the diffuse map on. That looks very bland. That's fine. Um, then we put the normals on. Fix now, sure. Global illumination real time. Um, missile normal on there. Metallic occlusion. Specular roughness. Click the material name. Generate. Um, this one has an emissive as well. Those little subtle areas there that, that are a little bit lighter, um, they actually are lit up. And those are ones that I'd set some uh, special lighting on as well. Now, I guess one question that immediately is going to jump to mind is, uh, how different is this really going to be from, visually speaking, what we we're originally seeing in um, Unity, just using their standard shader, which is certainly quicker to use. We don't have to go through this material map packing stuff. We're not calculating occlusion. We're not using any sort of fancy specularity, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's going to look better. Um, it might not be night and day. That really is something that's going to depend I'm going to turn glossy reflections back on because I think that's able to be handled okay in this particular shader set. Add on emissive mission. Um, how exactly much better it looks is dependent on a lot of things, such as the lighting and uh, the um, rest of the scene composition, basically. Uh, we're trying to get as close to that amazing Substance Painter look, you know, what we see in Substance Painter as possible. And this is the way to go down that road. Um, again, if I'm able to swap around what's going on with the uh, um, ambient lighting, then that will be a, a big, big win if that's the case on this. Um, so that remains to be seen. All right, and then so we're to the last piece, thank goodness. Normally this would not take so long. Um, all right, so put the diffuse in there. Um, that already looks a little more like what it did in substance. Like what gives? Um, like why did the Unity one not look as close? You know, the normal strength back that up to one. That was too low. That's something you're just going to have to constantly watch for. Um, okay. Pull this in. Um, metallic. Occlusion. Specular. Roughness. Select material. Generate. Now you'll notice this looks flat and awful, and you can see a bunch of repetitive bits and um there's a lot wrong with that well that's pre-pbr i mean that's uh <laughs> the difference uh in you know a decade of technology we haven't 
applied any PBR elements to this yet. And um, it's just kind of funny. You get to kind of see in, in real time the progression that happens from uh, moving up the years in technology. Um, and GPUs just kind of laugh at this sort of thing. This only requires, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jader Model 3.0. So, I mean, that technology is old. That's um, pre-2010, I, I want to say. Um, all right. This one's way more green. That's a lot more standard for things that I tend to work with. It's very metallic. Okay, so that's getting better. Um, we'll turn on glossy reflections. Okay, that's getting a little better again. Some of this fuzziness here is that um, <clears throat> um, chromatic aberration effect that I have on. And it's also weirdly zoomed in because for some reason... The Unity editor likes to put this at 40 field of view instead of 60 for reasons that I cannot fathom. At any rate, there is an emission component to this and um, definitely has a mask, obviously. Drag that into the mask there. Hey, that looks a lot more like what it did in... Um, Substance painter, all right. One through four, goodbye. All right. So, hit apply. Hey, there we go. Now it's zoomed out properly again. Um, now, one of the issues that this is having is that um, it's that HDRI map, the one that I don't want on here um which is a bummer um hopefully the alloy shaders are a little more res responsive to uh changes in the hgri maps than uh unity but i guess we'll see or then the then the unity standard shader um but we'll see i don't know if they require the baking step or not I've never tried non-baked until messing with Unity here. So, um, boop, 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 do, doop, doop, do. All righty. So this is what we have now, as opposed to what we were seeing before. Um, distortion over there. That's uh, the chromatic aberration. Um, so for some reason on this particular ship, I do feel like the normal maps are a little on the strong side. Actually, let's just, uh, let's just take this here. I'm just going to down the normal strength a little, like if I down this a ton, suddenly that starts looking way more, you know, way more reasonable this i don't you know like what's up with that why on earth is that coming through through so ridiculously over strong i have not had that problem anywhere else um so okay fine do that um normally you won't need to do that it's just going to be one of those little tuning things now the arc and logo um I had changed that thing to have a tint that was red and to really up the metalness on it, some other things like that. Um, the base color, taking that off helps. Um, I can tweak the roughness down some here. I think maybe if I take off glossy reflections, yep. Uh, it was getting too many reflections from other things nearby. Um, yeah, okay, there we go. The occlusion was messing with it there some too. Okay, so let's actually bring back in its um, underlying, uh, where is it? Arc and logo diffuse. Let's see what happens. 
too dark. Yep. That's fine. Oh boy. Control V it doesn't. Um white. We'll do white white ring. Why not? Um okay. And so I can actually brighten this a little bit. So, yeah, hey, look at that. That looks better. It's more in keeping with what's going on here. Um the occlusion I don't want that strong. Um specular highlights definitely do want. Huh. I can't remember if I updated this. You can go above. Nope. Not this particular one. Um that looks kind of neat. Um, it's not what was in Substance Painter, but that's fine. I, I intentionally was kind of diverting from that. Um, if I turn off glossy reflections on this and down the um, occlusion a fair bit, um, down the normal strength a lot. That's actually kind of interesting. It's not so in your face as the one that was emissive was. Um, I did have a try a rim emission. That's not something I could do with the standard shader. So with the rim emission, it's just going to come around the edges here. Um, except what the fall off is and all that sort of thing. Um, That looks better. Um, still getting some detail there in the center. And probably crank back up the rough. No, that looks weird. You can see it on the thing there. It looks strange. Okay. Um, I can maybe go back up with the occlusion. Yes. See, now we've got a bit more feeling of depth. This feels more grounded slightly. Um, so, woohoo! Um, that's looking more reasonable. <clears throat> and then the beam cannon. <sighs> I like these ridges and stuff here. And this is already in an area that's so distorted that probably I'm not going to want to mess with this much. Um, making it a little less crazy, though. That, 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 that works. I like the ridges there, but downing it. So it's not quite so strong. It's kind of cool. Um, and making the metallic adjusted just slightly makes it so this blends a little bit better. So one of the things I want to point out is that uh, in the original pre-alloy version here, what we were seeing, um, and we're still at a ridiculous frame rate, um, what we were seeing is these bits right here, which are supposed to be very rough and non-reflective, these rust pieces, they were getting lost. And part of that may have been to do with the normal strength being a bit high um, in an unfortunate way. But regardless, that's what we were seeing. Um, now... Um, I'm going to do a final experiment here. All of these changes, normally I would have to save, right? What is going on on the side because it doesn't remember things into, uh, into the game. But uh, since these are external assets, they're not part of the scene view. Uh, since I'm in exiting play mode, it remembers everything just fine because it wasn't something that uh, was part of the scene. It's assets outside the scene. So save that, save all assets just to make sure. Um, window, lighting, settings. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to clear baked data and see what happens. Hmm, interesting. Um, all righty. So...
Okay. So is this being lit by environmental lighting at all at this point? And the answer is no. Unity, why you gotta be like that? What's going on? I don't understand. So when I'm lighting it from a color, it works fine. But when you're lighting it from an HDRI skybox, it has to be pre-baked. That bites. Um, that really bites. OK. So interestingly, one of the things I theoretically could do here is say something like, all right, we're going to have that sort of light there, and then like more of a brownish light more towards the middle, and then a, a much darker brown light down below. Let's lighten this up a lot. Um, lighten this up a lot. Man, that looks bad. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Gross. Um, well, that goes to help show you some of the power of IBL. Um, might mean that I should be using a different environmental reflection, though. So I hit uh, generate lighting. There's no reflection probes. It's copying, extracting the zero reflection probes. It's now baked. The light map. It's not the light map I want. But in the game, it's the light map I want. It's just not the one I want in the main menu. Um, Let's see what happens when I change environmental reflections. Does that even? It may not make any difference right now because maybe it, maybe it does. Ah. I don't think it makes any difference until I bake again. You'll notice I've got real time lighting on, and that's um, part of what's going on there. So. This is an improvement for sure. Um, if we look back at uh, earlier in the video, you can scroll back and see what was this before versus what is it now. Just by switching to the alloy shaders, even the IPL, um, the HGRI um, light map uh, stuff isn't something I can swap out to be more context. Um, sensitive um you know this is okay um i could do a multi-scene thing and all that but um light mapping gets weird as soon as you have multiple scenes that are additively opened in unity so before somebody says that yes i've tried that sort of thing before and no i'm not real thrilled with it um so at any rate, I will ultimately make this look better by adding in more stuff going on, um, which is fine by me. Um, but the reason why I wanted to look at this uh, now versus later is because um, Blue and Synth are about to be doing a whole bunch of work on these uh, maps, um, you know, getting things painted in Substance Painter, getting things exported, all that jazz. And I don't want to have them do it for the standard shader. And then we just come right back around and again have to redo it for um, the uh, alloy shaders now that those are suddenly free. Uh, those becoming free was an unanticipated development. So here we are. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. And hopefully that was uh, an interesting view.